I just want to rock out a little bit. Ah, I don't know. Sometimes you just gotta play some power chords and wake yourself up, whatever. Alright. I was uh, thinking about what we should talk about today. I think since the summer season is approaching, and uh, this is the month generally, I'm not gonna say the month, this is the time where most of the straw hats begin coming in. Um, middle of this month, end of this month, um, all through next month, all through June, you're going to see a lot of summer uh, deliveries. They generally come a little bit later than when people want them. This year, a little later than usual because of obvious reasons, uh, the economy or whatever. <laughs> Something I want to touch a little bit more on is the different types of straws, uh, the different um, the different choices that are available for you. Um, what's out there? What uh, what's the difference? And um, you know, why would I want this straw and that that straw and this and that? All right, let's talk about it now. Um, the, one of the more popular ones is Panama straw, which is a, a type of straw. It's one of the, the only straws that's woven by hand. Um, there are others, but this is the main one. It's the one you're gonna see usually. Panama straw comes from Ecuador. The straw comes from Ecuador. That's where it's woven. Generally the unfinished, you know, the straw, not the hat itself, the straw body, sort of like a disc of straw, uh, is woven there. And then, you know, they're stacked up, finished, uh, and sent to different places like America, uh, Europe, you know, uh, Italy, Spain, wherever hat companies are, and, and they shape them and turn them into hats. Um, you know, there are finished hats in Ecuador also, but um, they're not known for that. You know, there's not a lot of quality finished hats there. They tend to kind of throw them together quickly and, you know, wrinkle and stuff. So, they're known more for weaving the hats, not so much making the hats in, in Ecuador. This stuff is very good. It's, um... It's a versatile straw. Um, they tend to get cracks here from a lot of people basically picking them up off the counter like that, you know, picking it up and also taking it off their head and stuff. Um, nowadays they're coming reinforced inside this little point. So that, you know, that helps keep it together so it doesn't crack. Um, but uh, once you start flipping your hats upside down for storage, um, the cracks over here go away. So it's kind of a thing, you know, you get a little crack, then you get two cracks, then it becomes bigger and bigger, then it's a hole, and then, you know, the hole just gets bigger until the whole front is kind of like coming apart. There's a hole there. That's when people tend to get rid of their Panamas. The other thing is if they sweat through it and there's big sweat stains, uh, then they get rid of them too. So Panamas... Um, they might not be the most durable, but they're not the most fragile either. They're kind of a little bit in the middle. I'm gonna say they're very lightweight. 
They can be very, very elegant. The styling can be you know, really beautiful. It can be one of the dressiest, most elegant hats, but it can also look casual. You can wear it with your shorts, your jeans, your bathing suit, um, and you can wear it with your, your suit suit and your tie also. Um, very uh, versatile, useful hat. They have coolness, they've got the style and everything. They come colored all different ways. Um, I like them. Like I said, store them upside down so you don't make cracks here and try to get one that's reinforced if you have a choice, you know, with reinforcements there. Uh, it'll be a lot safer. Stuff without the reinforcements inside the crown over here will uh, be more susceptible to cracking, although both of them will crack, you know, just uh, one more easily. Um, Panama is a good straw. It's a it's a nice looking straw. It's lightweight. Um, it's very cool. You know, it tells a story. It's got that whole uh, you know hand woven in Ecuador thing. The higher end ones are pen signed. There's two people sign them with ballpoint pen. Uh, the higher end ones are called Monte Cristi Finos. Uh, Monte Cristis again. Monte Cristi Finos has to be Fino quality. Monte Cristi is just the town, and the Fino quality is what you're looking for. They essentially won't have the edge folded over and hemmed over. Uh, they don't have the welt, which pretty much 99% of all Panamas have a welted edge. They cut it, then they fold it over, and they stitch it down. So basically you get a strong edge that's not going to unravel. Um, with the Monte Cristi Finos, Super Finos, and Mil Fino, the really high-end stuff, um, there's one guy who weaves it. He signs his name at the end in the ballpoint pen, in the crown. And the second guy, when he gets to the end, he just weaves those threads back into itself. So they finish it just with this thin edge. It just kind of gets woven back into itself and just stops at a really crisp, even line. And only the Monte Cristi Fino weavers know how to do that. You know, there's a few of them, very few. It gets taught, you know, generations pass it down. There's no school showing it. So those Finos are getting more expensive and uh, prices go up every year and stuff. And they become more scarce. You know, it's harder to find interesting bodies with like you know decorative cutouts they have doily different cutouts in them some of them with like shapes and arrows and uh feathers and suns and all kinds of different things um and some of them are just exquisite they're really nice uh the hard hard to find ones are wide brims now you know they're just tougher to find because the weavers are dying out um if you could find a DG inside of Fino, a DG uh, signature is Delgado. He's one of the famous weavers. He used to be like known as the best and stuff. And there's somebody else now. You know, I think he's uh, long since gone. But um, Panama is one way to go. Uh, the hemp hats are much stronger. The hemp stuff is definitely uh, more of a crushable straw. I'll show you have one right here. Now, um, here's your hemp. Your hemp has a stretch quality to it. So you can, yeah. When you get them, they're gonna be harder. They'll be more of a, uh, a spray that uh, laminates it. This one's very, very old, so it's softened up. But uh, essentially, they're way, way, way stronger, as you can see. Let's take a closer look at it. Pull now, ready? Okay, it's perfect still, right? Okay. Um, hemp is really, really, really durable. You can see there's not much I can't do to this hat. And there's really zero side effects happening. It's still, you know, nice break in the brim, everything. Um, you're gonna get infinite durability with the hemp. This is a specific kind of a weave. The way it's woven is Milan. Uh, we say Mylan weave in the hat uh, business. The Mylan hats are, all have this braided weave. So Mylan hats can be made out of hemp, but uh, they can weave this, uh, this braid out of anything. Uh, it could be made out of paper straw too. Um, they take like wood pulp, they make a kind of like a, a straw out of it. 
and uh, they spray it and they laminate it and they color it. They put the waterproofing kind of crystal clear coat on it and uh, then they braid them. So you've got a spool of this stuff, like a braid coming down. It goes right into the center, okay? And this spins around and basically the braid is getting sewn together with cotton thread in between it. So it's like braid, braid, sewn together with cotton thread. The next row, braid, and, they, and in between in these little cracks is sew. So they're sewing them, you know, with thread. So it's got a certain, you know, it pulls out, it pushes in. There's like a, uh, a stretchiness to it, the way it's woven. It's pretty high tech actually. But it's made out of something that's just pure, pure fiber, which is hemp. Um, you remember doing tug of war and the ropes that we used to use, those huge like fireman ropes. You remember those things, right? It's just like the toughest fiber, you know, it's you know, like vines, what vines, Tarzan vines are made out of. Um, so it's super strong and um, you know, water doesn't really get in it or saturate it or make it dissolve like a, a paper straw like um paper straw basically when the plasticky coating breaks down you got enough cracks in it the water goes into the paper and it all but kind of dissolves basically but hemp is just all fiber it's pure fiber so the water gets in it it's no big deal it's just uh you know the water will just kind of drip around it you know and that that rope fiber stuff just is not in it's impermeable so um it's very strong yet flexible and there's a lot of negative space there there's you know a lot of air here i don't know if you can see it but uh, if you get really close to it you know it depends how it focuses but you can really see through this you know let me see this hold on A lot of negative space, so there's always air coming through at every area of the hat. Okay? You could see it. You've got air, but there's not necessarily much sun going through there. It's not too much. It's pretty shaded, you know, you got a good shadow here. Here's your shadow. Um, best of both worlds. You get durability, durability. Um, there's a little bit more weight. Uh, you could hear this. Listen. It's not a light, light, light hat, but it's it's not that bad. A lot of the weight, I think, is in the... Um, I've got pads in here, sweat pads. There's padding under the leather, and the leather sweatband itself is all the weight. The hemp itself is, you know, it's a little bit heavier than Panama. But um, it's not that bad. I'm going to say it is a slightly heavier, though, than Panama. But the payoff is like tenfold, you know, the way it holds up. Um, you're going to get more lightness, more airiness with the Panama hat. And um, a lot of the stuff is going to be, does this hat have a leather sweatband? Does it have a ribbon or a cloth sweatband? Then it doesn't matter what the hat's made out of. Your leather sweatband is adding more weight than anything. It's kind of like... Your hat weighs this and whatever ounces, and the sweatband weighs exactly the same amount of ounces. So you're like doubling it. Um, a leather sweatband is going to block much more perspiration. One reason why we throw our hats away is because you sweat through it. It gets sweat stained, and you can't clean that. So you could only prevent it. But once the hat gets sweat stained, you got to throw it away. Um, if it's stained over here, you could put a new band right over it, but if it permeates past that, you know, you could go, yeah, a little wider band, but, you know, you can't, you can't fix here, you know, so, um, and you can't fix here, you know, if you curl it up, you know, it, it'll look sweaty. Um, prevention is the key, that's why I have all these, like, uh, well, not in this hat, actually. <laughs> my summer hats have them all, but many of my uh, felts, too. I, you put the pads in there. Cap Bennu sweatband that will prevent perspiration stains. Um, so will a leather sweatband. The leather sweatband is really going to give you most of the protection, but um, you know it doesn't work forever. So you'll have to start throwing the uh, 
disposable sweatbands on top of it when you start to see a problem. You see a little bit of salt or something peeking through, you put it on. You prevent the perspiration stains before it happens. So the sweat never touches your hat. That's the pros, you know, there's pros and cons. The leather sweatband is gonna be a better barrier for perspiration and stuff. It's gonna make your hat last way, way, way longer than a hat with just a ribbon sweatband or a cloth band, which you can sweat through pretty quickly. Um, the downside, the cons, is going to be it's heavier. The leather sweatband adds a lot. It's, uh, it gives you weight. It's basically, I mean, it's not the worst thing. I deal with it and I like it. Um, it basically is like putting a leather belt on your forehead when you're walking around on a hot day. You know, you're in your uh, tank top and your flip-flops and it's super hot out and then you got a leather belt over your forehead so actually also behind your head too so it's it's hot but it's not the worst thing there are so many payoffs the leather sweat band also allows you to just take a, a bandana wipe the leather put the hat back on and it's really clean it feels sanitary it feels dry where when you have a cloth or a ribbon sweatband, you might be like, oh, mine is much lighter. I'm not walking around with that belt on my head, you know? The thing is, I always use this analogy. Let's say it's, it's 90 degrees out, okay? You got your ribbon sweatbands. You guys go into a restaurant. It's air conditioned. It's cool. Everybody's cooled off. You feel nice and comfortable now, okay? It's time to go back out. You put your hat back on. The one with the cloth or the ribbon, the sweat is there. You're putting on a wet band. It's still there. Plus, it's cold from the air conditioning. You know, it's just totally saturated sweat, and you got to put it on. After becoming all comfortable and clean and, you know, refreshed again, you have to put this sweaty hat on. The guy who has the leather sweatband just wipes it with a handkerchief or a cloth. When he puts his hat on, it's bone dry. So it, it's just a dry piece of leather and uh, it's not wet and it's really comfortable it feels fresh so to me I like the leather sweatbands in a, uh, in a uh, summer hat I just think there's more pros than cons yeah it adds a little weight and stuff but um, you know maybe you'll be wearing it mostly in the air conditioning who knows you know for me I wear it at work and it's AC there all the time so it's not really a big deal for me um, and I have other hats too. I have hats that are big and wide and lighter, like my uh, my black uh, Panama Bolero. That gives me good protection and it's really feather light. So that's good for like an outdoor concert or something like that. And, and um, you know, this has got its pros too. If you're gonna be on the beach, uh, Panama might get dog. Don't bring Panama on vacation to the beach. This can take some water. I'm not gonna say, you know, go swimming with it, but any accidents, it'll be okay. You know, these are just so strong um, and they're hemp. So, you know, water doesn't really hurt. It's like putting, putting sprinkling some water or taking an uh, aerosol uh, pump thing and spraying water on a big tug of war rope. It's, it's like a joke. It's not going to hurt it. It'll disappear, you know. So, that's two of the best, I think. Um, there are other straws, too. There's coconut straw, uh, like the classic coconut hat, which is made from coconut palm. That's a little bit lighter. It's light, um, it's like Panama, but um, it's not hand woven. It's a little bit cheaper. It's got a rich kind of a coconut shell color. Uh, they look very vintage and they have a cool 50s look to them and they take clip-on bands really nice. They come with a red and a blue stripe, what they call a club band, but you can cover that with paisley or black or brown or beige or blue or pastel colors or florals, um, paisleys, and it's infinite. They're called pug bands, P-U-G, and they clip on, they go right over your existing band. And you can change the bands really nice on them. I think we sell them in the summertime only. They're like five bucks for pug bands, but they're not always on our website. They're usually not. You have to call. Say, what colors do you have in pug bands? I'll be like, eh, we're out of it. They're like, well, Kevin says you have a couple of colors. You know, in the off season, like now, we might have like light blue, pink, and like, you know, some bad colors. Probably a bunch of paisleys and florals too, because we have a lot of those. Um, but 
Yeah, they come out in the season uh, only like generally June, July, August around then. And um, coconut is a little more susceptible to cracking. Uh, sometimes on the seams, the seams are sewn, you know, each row of coconut is sewn together with cotton thread. It's all natural, it's coconut and cotton, very like organic, natural, there's not like a lot of, you know, just like stiffeners or dyes on it. Um, but don't, don't squeeze it, don't be a squeezer, because you can, you know, they can be cracked cracks if you do that. Um, I'm not going to say, I mean, they do have some flexibility. You can do this kind of stuff to it, but it's probably best not to. Um, they're a little bit cheaper than Panama hats. You know, they could be about a half the price of a Panama for a good American-made uh, coconut classic. But, um, you know, sometimes, yeah, you could get crack here from, you know, it's just a crunchier straw rather than a bendier straw. Uh, when you get them, they're in the middle. They have a little bendy, a little crunch, but uh, they're not so dry. But as they get older, they'll get drier, so you don't want to pinch. Keep it upside down. It becomes a non-issue. The hats don't break anymore as soon as you get into this habit. You keep it upside down. Um, and uh, I'm going to say I like them a lot. I used to carry them with like a flat top, too. We called it the Telecoco, but like Sam Sneed used to wear. Uh, you could call up and ask, you know, can you guys get me one? Maybe they'll order a box of them and put them in the catalog again. That would be good. But for now, it's called the Coconut Classic, and we have the center crease. It's like my hat with a two-inch brim, basically. Red and blue uh, club bands, kind of a coconut shell brown uh, natural straw. Very 50s, very cool, 1950s, barbecue, tiki bar, cool dude. I think they're amazing. Uh, and again, they take good bands, colored bands too, which uh, they excel at. Um, another straw, if you want to talk about a very lightweight straw, is Sisal. S-I-S-O-L. We don't have a lot of Sisal hats left. We cleared a lot of them out. We used to carry like six, seven models, and they'd all come in like, you know, a big array of colors. And we had a teardrop, a center crease, a short brim, all kinds of different Sisal hats. We stopped selling them because they, they're very hard to take care of. You can't really steam them. That's the problem. They don't respond well to steam, and if they get wet, they get a wrinkly kind of a look, kind of like a little old. They, they lose their new crispness. Um, they can be corrected by blocking it, by bringing it to, you know, like Van in the back uh, workshop, he'll block your hat. We have a custom hatter at JJ Hat Center. Uh, Van, he makes hats for, you know, this celebrity and that guy. And I know he makes a lot for Cam Newton, um, the ball player. But um, yeah, he'll make you any hat you want, and he'll do any repairs or modifications you want. So he'll change bands, he'll put binding, you know, cut your brim. I believe there's a price if you go in the uh, jjhatcenter.com uh, website, just go to the workshop. There's a whole uh, menu of prices, you know, cutting brims, reflanging a brim, blah, 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 changing a band, brim binding, getting a, a new lining, a new leather sweatband, cloth sweatband, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, he'll also make you a custom hat. We don't, we don't call it custom hats. We just say the workshop because we don't really, we don't really bill ourselves as a custom hatter, but we do it, you know, in the back. It's, it's pretty much all he does. Van will spend his whole day making custom hats for people and, um, and doing repairs, you know, changing bands, sweatbands, stuff like that. That's, that's all he does. Um, Sisal, that's I had. We we stopped carrying them because they're generally in like the two hundred fifty dollar range. We get them from Italy, you know, really good places, Tessie, you know, Borsellino, places like that. They um, they're the lightest hats you can get. And for summer, if you want to go like the ultimate lightest, like I want a hat that feels like like rice paper. You know, you can just kind of flip it on your fingers. It catches air like a, like a parachute. It's so light. I mean, I can't even tell you how light. Just picture a hat made out of like almost like rice paper. You could see through it when you bring it up to your face. It's so fine, like, you know, really fine, fine pinholes. Um, Sisol hats, I think S-I-S-O-L, if you put that in the search, there's only two left that we're selling, you know, and uh, there's limited like size smalls left. This, this is going to be the lightest of all the straws. Um, 
There's also um, paracycle, there's parabuntal, um, bundle, all those different hat types are related. They're sort of like um, different weaves and um, it's like a um, sort of a, a metallic, has a very slight metallic texture to it. Almost like when you go to like Pottery Barn and you're flipping through the different rugs and carpets on that huge like wall thing of carpets and you get to one that looks a little bit metallic. They have like sort of strands of like macrame and then there's sort of like little silver or gold metallic natural strands going through it. That's sisal and um, it has this reflective quality and they take dye like a champ, like really well. You know, you can get them in black, navy, burgundy, and you know, beautiful navy colors, and mm. awesome like gold colors, and they, they look really nice. Silver and platinum, and they have a very slight metallic look to them, which reflects the sun. And then, you know, if you toss them up, they just kind of float down like, like a parachute. They're really light, almost like they're made out of paper. Um, they have a little bit of stretchiness to them. You know, the weave has got some give and take to it. So it's not like totally fragile. Um, so in other words, if you sat on it, it wouldn't just crunch or rip like paper. It has a good strength to it. But when they get wet, um, they sort of get a wrinkly look and it's very hard to steam. You have to spray it with some good stiffener let the stiffener dry and then you have to steam it and spread it out almost like you're grabbing like a, I don't know you're grabbing a, a bed sheet or something and pulling it outward so you have to grab it and as it's sort of like elastic push down and pull out as it's drying so it's almost like everything is like come together like a wrinkled you know like a wrinkled skin kind of and you want to like open it like so you have to sort of spread it as it's drying, it's really tough to steam. It's like almost impossible because then after you do one area, if you start working on this area, the residual steam bounces off here and then just, it goes back. So it's like almost impossible to get the whole hat done, that one area ruining the next area. It's really sensitive and I'm gonna say it's almost impossible to steam. You know, you have to like spread it and like just hold it there, you know, like count to like 60 seconds while you're holding it, spreading it. It's a lot of like muscle power too. Um, and the results are just so, you get like so little results. Um, but it works when you have to reblock it. If you totally reblock the straw, it comes out like brand new. The hat looks like brand new. One girl ruined her dad's like $350 sisal borsalino one day and it came back so wrinkly, like she was sunbathing or something. And it went from like this perfect, perfect fedora to this like wrinkled up thing. And she was so upset, but then we blocked it for her. It came back looking like brand new, like perfect snap and everything. So yeah, it's for the kind of person who goes from their house to their garage, to their car, to a restaurant. You know, they use a valet and they don't go outside a lot and they're not gonna get splashed with water or suntan oil on it or, you know, barbecue sauce. It's for staying, you know, in that, I don't know. It's not an active person's kind of a straw because it's very susceptible to all that stuff. Like rain, it's, it hates it. I'm gonna say if you live in a dry place, it's perfect. Like, you know, Arizona or something, bam. Good hat for you, but uh, sisal, um, along with being the lightest of all the straws, it's the hardest to work with. It's very delicate and it hates rain. So, there you go. Shantung is something that's interesting. The Shantung Westerns are a little bit heavy, but Westerns are like working hats. You know, they're hats that you wear, you know, when you're doing your, your horse riding and stuff, and, and I don't know, ranching and whatever, barrel racing. And it's, you know, your horse could run over your hat and stuff, so it's gotta be durable. So it's one of those kind of things. So they're working hats and Shantun can be heavily laminated almost with like a spray plastic over it, like a shellac. Um, that's one type. It can also be a little softer too. The softer Shantun things, they're not great in the rain, um, but the ones that have the good clear coat on them, they're very, they're okay. 
it's essentially a imitation Panama, but um, they can be very high quality Shantungs too. And um, I really like the stuff like the Stetson Westerns and the Resistol Westerns, all that stuff. I think they're great. Um, there's a little break in period. Well, it's a big break in period, but it, uh, it works, you know. Um, other straws that you see in Western is palm. Palm straws can be some of the cheapest stuff. The ones made in Mexico, really cheap. You could get like, you know, under 50, 55 bucks, like a Stetson Western uh, made of palm. Uh, they're made in Mexico and stuff. And then if you get ones that are off-branded, like less than that, you know. The palm stuff is really hard and it's heavy. It's like almost a little bit rock-like. But um, it's interesting because it's the only straw that can take rain. So you can actually take it out and if it gets rained on, you're just like, hey, that's cool. Um, the rain doesn't hurt it and it's also good to shape it. So when it gets wet, you can actually, you know, let's say you want to steam this into it. You could do this and tie a little string around it and just let it, you know, let's say you want that, or whatever you want. You just leave it and the water will set the shape for you. So, um, I dropped my pick twice. That was cool. So you can purposely buy a palm hat, and if you wanted to do something like, you know, fancy with it, you could do something with your brim um, and just steam that in, not steam it in, and just kind of whatever, water it in. You spray it with water and saturate it, not the inside, just the straw on the outside, and you tie it up or use some wire or something and just uh, hold it in place with the wire, keep your hat upside down, um, on its crown to dry, and um, if you used enough water, it should dry in the new shape. So they're really cool. They're heavy. If uh, you can take that, and you're not um, really sensitive to heat, you know, if you have health issues and stuff, and you know, problems with whatever breathing or heat or you know, asthma. I don't know. Um, it can be the heavy, heavier stuff, you know, uh, but it still protects you. The sun is not going to hit you, but it adds some good weight. Um, a hat like this can pretty much last you indefinitely. You can have them almost forever. Uh, I don't think it's really that bad to sweat through it because hats like that, I mean, they're super thick. It's going to be hard to sweat through the straw and the leather sweatband. But if you do, eh, you know, it's cool. It's uh, It stays on there, you know? You can do whatever you want. You can cover the... The bands with some rawhide and put a big feather in it you know there are ways to cover things and uh modify them and stuff you know kind of jury rig it but um palm is good it's heavy and uh, it's durable it's cheap 